is being settled, we have the hope of creating new prosperity in that region. We know what happened. Conflicts arose in all parts of the world. Hi, here is Marco Ulenius, your traveling futurist. This time, I'm gonna tell you something that you probably don't know about the history and the future of the relationship between Arab countries and Israel. You know, this relationship, as we all know, has been highly, highly tensioned over the last decades, actually ever since the Israel as a Jewish state was formed uh, by the decision of United Nations in 1948. The history goes actually to thousands of years back when in the historical uh, territory of Palestine was then uh, occupied by Arabs as well as by Jews. And they were living there um, quite harmoniously until the Romans came uh, and invaded. And after that, what happened was that Jewish diaspora basically started, meaning that the Jews were forced out of their own country. And they spread all over the world in those days, uh, particularly uh, to Europe, but also uh, beyond that. The Jewish communities started to flourish. And then fast forward into 18, 80s and 90s. And those days, Jews had particularly hard time in Russia of those days. And there were a lot of um, um, commotion against uh, Jews living in Russia. And some of those Jews decided to wander back to their own holy land in Palestine. And that's where the first sort of a modern communities of Jews were formed in that region. Now later, uh, we know what happened. Conflicts arose in all parts of the world. Uh, we went through the World War I, and after the World War I, uh, two decades before the World War II uh, began, but particularly the rise of the Nazis and the rise also the far right in Italy uh, meant that suddenly there was a much more concrete and existential uh, threat to the Jews. So we all know what happened uh, with, uh, uh, in the Nazis concentration camp, something terrible, something um, un speakable almost that uh, six millions of, of or so Jews were killed in those concentration camps. But that meant also at the same time uh, that, uh, that that was a final push for Jews to find a more sustainable solution to the essential problem, which was that they don't have a country of their own. So this migration uh, towards Palestine those days uh, was greatly aggravated. And finally, after the Second World War, uh, there was already such a stronghold of Jewish communities uh, around the Palestine that they made their case uh, to United Nations uh, to form a Jewish state. And of course, already in those days, uh, there was a lot of antagonism between the Jewish communities and the Arab communities around, particularly uh, because Jews were really desperate to build their own country. And they were very quick, actually, uh, to uh, build the necessary infrastructure and farming activities and all those kind of necessities that the modern state requires. And, uh, and then uh, what happened was that the, the moment uh, United Nations gave their approval 
to form a Jewish state called Israel, the real conflict started between uh, uh, that newly formed Jewish state and, and many Arab countries around, uh, particularly uh, uh, there was an issue with the, with the Jordan, there was an, uh, a conflict uh, with Egypt, and so forth and so forth, and Syria as well. And all of these kind of started to load these tensions between those two countries. The, the conflict got settled and, uh, and, uh, and Israel was able to say their independence, which by itself was a miracle, but then followed another conflict and that all created a lot of tension between uh, the Israel and Arab countries. Over the years and decades, uh, uh, there came uh, another big issue, which was the issue about the Palestine and the issue about the refugees, uh, who in a way, uh, when it comes to the Palestinians, that, that they are actually refugees inside their own country, so to say. And there was a really hard way to, to see that, how this kind of a conflict can ever be resolved. And the idea of the two states were formed then in the process. De facto, the situation currently is that, yes, Israel is a state, it's actually a very strong state, very well developed. Uh, state. Um, they have put a lot of stakes in the R&D and become very strong militarily and economic wise. But at the same time, uh, there are still these problems and conflict between them and the Arab countries that, uh, that they have not been able to resolve even with a, with a kind of a strong internal um, unity and with that uh, we are currently in the situation where over the last decades in spite of a numerous and serious efforts to build peace between the Arab people and the state of the Israel has not been very successful until very recently we have seen some light at the end of the tunnel, of which the most important is what happened between the United Arab Emirates and the Israel, that they were able to resolve their conflict, um, build a diplomatic ties, and in fact, start trading between those two countries. Today, we know that there has been years, if not decades of the issues, some problems between Arab countries and the Israel. In fact, this goes back in the times when Israel as a Jewish state was formed by the resolution of United Nations in 1948. That was the moment when uh, things rapidly uh, evolved and changed to where they were uh, before the independence of Israel. But we have to go actually back, back in the history to understand where are the true sources of this conflict and what is the position of the Israel in this region as a, as a country. Now, if we go back in the history, we can see that actually at the time there was um, in Palestine territory, there were uh, um, Arab people living together with Jewish people. They both share the region and the land there. Um, but things changed when the Romans came to invade this area. And after that, what happened was that Jewish diaspora, the times when Jews were pushed out of their own country, really uh, started from, from, the, from that uh, episode in the history. And Jews were spread 
in different parts of the world, particularly in Europe, but also to, to Russia and, and some of them to Africa and Asia and so forth. But they lost basically the country that they consider as their homeland. And we have to go then um, in the history to the times of 1880s and 1890s. And this time we are in Russia. Some of the Jewish communities there were heavily persecuted. This also happened in other parts of the globe, particularly in Europe, that there were times when Jews were sort of culprits of all kinds of deeds that they have not done, but uh, it was easy for, for those that hold the power to, to show that those were the ones that uh, causes all the troubles that we have. Now this time, uh, some of the Jews in Russia in those days uh, decided to go and settle back to their original home country, uh, Palestine. So they were there, they started to build their communities, and later on um, they came a stronger ideology among the Jewish communities that, well, we have to actually to, to go back our own country. And before we have our own country, we cannot really live peaceful life. There came a very strong ideology eh, among the Jews that we need to have our own country. That before we have our own country, we cannot settle into the harmonious life, be a part of the society that we respect and others respect ourselves. So the idea of the Jewish state was uh, newly formed. And when we look at the history uh, of Europe in particularly and the world, we see that the wars, the First uh, World War and the Second World War and what happened between just forced this identity of Jewish state to be formed. Of course, those days, the areas of uh, the historic Palestine were basically uh, occupied by British forces. And um, it was the territory of them. And thereby, uh, the solution had to come how to deal uh, with uh, the British when it comes to building uh, the Jewish state. Now, before that, obviously, what happened was that there was a heavy persecution of the Jews uh, when the Nazi regime uh, took over in the early uh, 30s in Germany uh, and later elsewhere in Europe. And the horrors of the concentration camps and, and, and six million um, Jews being uh, killed in those camps was a clear token that we need a solution to this. So after the Second World War, this movement towards the Palestine became very strong and it became suddenly possible actually to claim that state. Um, so there was a strong Jewish community uh, in those days living in, in, in Palestine and they wanted to claim independence. And the British eventually um, uh, decided that they don't want to uh, make a decision about that, uh, leave it to United Nations. And in 1948, finally, the, the Jewish state was formed. But that was far from the end of the story, because the moment this Jewish state of Israel claimed their independence, that was the moment when several Arab states invaded into Israel and the war started. Against the odds, Jews were able to defend their newly defined uh, nation. This war was settled and the life of the Jewish state began. But as we know, subsequently came other conflicts, mostly involving the strongest Arab country in those days, which was Egypt. And several wars occurred. And as a result of those wars, 
the position of Israel was strengthened. And that was only possible because Israel has been uh, developing very fast as a country. They were able to modernize the country. They were able to invest in, um, in R&D, in the new technologies, uh, in the infrastructure. They basically built uh, a part of the old land of Israel to be a garden for them, which was a, almost like a miracle how they were able to uh, build all that uh, um, um, uh, farming uh, there at the time. All of that they were able to do, and as a result, uh, they became very strong. When we look at the current state of the Israel, uh, we need to see that probably before uh, Netanyahu has left his position finally as a premier, we won't see the final solution to arise in the horizon, so to say. But I'm sure that as we move towards the future, everybody starts to see how much more uh, benefit it would provide for all the parties involved if this dispute, this conflict that has been persisting for so many years and decades can be finally settled and the issue around the Palestine particularly can be settled so that those people could be living there in peace. And once I believe this is being settled, we have the hope of creating new prosperity in that region. And that is a torch of light that, uh, that we hope will be kept up in the air to also to show to the world that the old conflicts can be resolved and that this region could be also an example of how we don't have to create the same kind of the future as we have done in the past. Subscribe to my channel where you can learn more about the future. And I also love to hear your feedback.